What's going on everyone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today we will be talking Silverblade Araminthia, the new Mystic Summon 5 star Moonlight Hero waifu we all want. Alright, so today we are going to be talking about stats, skills, gears, and of course some team comps that I believe she will fit really well into. Alright, so let's quickly dive into her stats. Okay, so what we have here is attack 961, health 4152, speed 106, not bad, and defense 689. So her stats are nothing out of this world. Her attack is not high like Ludwig, Tenebria, and Basar, but her speed is on the higher side for mage class. Um, pretty much just looking at this, her stats are identical to the regular Araminthia and the other um, Moonlight 5-star mage, I think her name is uh, um, Spectre Tenebria, yeah, that's, that's her. Uh, identical stats. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go look at her skills. Alright, skill 1, Flame Friction. Attacks the enemy with an explosion of flame with a 65% chance to burn for one turn. On soul burn, becomes 100% chance, ignores effect. And at plus 3, we can get this to 75%. Skill 2, Flame Release. Activates Flame Release if the enemy is burned after using Flame Friction. Flame Release attacks all enemies with Mystic Fire Energy, increasing the caster's combat readiness by 30%. Uh, it's pretty interesting. We might want to uh, work on this one. Drops a giant meteor to stun all enemies for one turn with 40% chance to inflict burn to inflict three burn effects for two turns not bad we can get this to 50% which isn't really too high but not bad I heard that this animation is really really beautiful I haven't really looked at it but we'll take a look at it now okay so in what order would I raise this skill the first one that I would raise is her skill one since this is the one that we will be using most of the time plus this is the skill that activates her skill two passive flame release so i would get this to plus three as soon as i can just for that 75 percent chance then i would most likely work on her s3 and try to get this up to plus three just to get that you know to a good 50 percent even might not make a big difference but any little bit helps just to get those three stacks of burn which is where a lot of her damage will be coming from and last and lastly i like to focus on flame release at least get this up to mm, plus three or plus four just because um i would probably going to be using her mostly as a farmer unit so i just want to maximize her aoe damage potential and as you know we mainly use her S1. This will probably be proccing very, very often. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at her animations. I'll have to warm up. Burn them all! They get on my nerves. I've got to remove them. And there we have it, her famous AoE stun. Um... I only see, is that, I only see like one stack of burn, I thought it could be up to three, so let's try that again and see if we can get one. I one can't one. take this anymore. I'll have to warm up. Oh, there we go, I mean, uh, yep, there we go, we got two. I mean, it is a 40% chance, so it's not really that high. Um, One other thing that I really want to look at is how her flame release skill works. <laughs> Until everything burns. All right, it's so time to go. show you what I've got. So pretty much every time we use our S1 on a target that's burned, she uses her S2 flame release, increases her combat readiness, and does AoE damage to everybody. So it seems like it's actually relatively easy to keep her burn stacks up. So we can assume that we're going to be using this probably like, what, 80 to 90% of the time. All right, now that we've looked at her skills, let's talk gears so for pvp i'm looking at a uh, speed mixed with hit or immunity set 
um, for her accessories um, necklace attack ring attack and boots of course speed speed is everything in pvp especially for her um, for substats priority is in this order speed attack effectiveness hp so um why so much speed and this is because of her s3 you want her to be the first one to attack so she can get off her stun and her burns this will allow all of your units to much to like um move first which you know in pvp is practically a win her stun allows her to pair up really well with units like moonlight says who can basically nuke anyone that's stunned also pairs well with any other unit that does extra damage to uh any enemies that's under stun or uh any debuff such as like a dot like burn poison or okay so for uh, artifact in pvp we want kal atra <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce that, which is 30% uh, damage on a debuff target. Um, you know, this is, as we can see, this is going to be, you know, 100% of the time. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. It's time for fireworks. Now, who first? You know, the consistent burns with her uh, makes it uh, relatively easy to be able to keep that 30% uh, damage boost up with the artifact. Okay, so for PvE, I'm looking at an attack or a rage set for the four piece and a hit or immunity for the two piece. Um, necklace, attack, ring, attack, boots, attack or speed. Personally, I would probably pick the speed boots because I like units, you know, being a little bit faster, but that's just my personal preference. Plus, it stacks um, really good with her S2 perk, which increases her combat readiness by 30%. But for those of you that like the, the bigger numbers, um, attack is an option. Uh, keep in mind, also there's a note, um, the multiplier for burn is 1.2 times attack. This is pretty much twice as much as any other DLT in the game. Um, for example, poison, which is a 0 0.56 times attack multiplier, I believe. And, you know, this is amazing for Araminta since she is, like we've said before, likely to keep burn on her target at all times. You know, especially with her S3 that could put multiple stacks of burn on a target. So, um, her high... Um, burn multiplier and the reason that she could keep so many stacks of burn on a target is the main reason why attack is so beneficial for her because you know these DOTs scale off of the attack okay so for substats we're looking at speed attack effectiveness and HP same as for PvP for artifacts for PvP we are looking at radiant forever which is the challenge artifact you know the challenge is going on right now so if you haven't gotten that artifact i highly recommend you do get it it's amazing for any mage that does aoe damage or kaladra so basically radiant forever increases at max increases the damage you do to elite monsters and bosses by f up to 50 percent on your aoe attacks so for her, which, you know, with her flame release and her S3, she's basically, you know, doing AoEs all the time. Fantastic artifact for her. And lastly, let's talk team comps. For Arena and Guild Wars, I would put her on a team where she can help heroes who benefit greatly from debuffs, like uh, this, her stun and her burn. Um, so for those lucky enough to have pulled the moonlight says now's your time to shine You found somebody that can actually make him useful so <laughs> So if you found and found a place for him moonlight Araminthia will solve your problem Pretty much all you have to do is make your cess lower than her so like that you could take advantage of her 100% um, stun chance and like that make use of his s3 which 
literally only works when a target is stunned and he has a really really shitty stun chance so this is your time to actually make him useful just so just build him like a glass cannon forget about speed if everybody's stunned his speed doesn't matter because he's gonna go next anyways okay so thanks to her um skill 2 passive which makes her s1 and aoe when attacking a target with burn she works amazing in aoe sweep teams i'll like erase your that. existence i'll have to warm up so she works amazing in aoe sweep teams the this means she could uh sync well with uh, combat readiness boosters like tamarin uh thief Ruzid, or auxiliary lots okay so um a guild war guild g g god i'm butchering that word a guild war team for her could look like um on your uh on your front line Ruzid, auxiliary lots or clurry and then moonlight says and her this is for basically sweeping by providing a stun, which is Armenthia, a nuker, Molaitas, and combat readiness booster, which is either Ruzid, Auxiliary Lutz, or Clurry with her S1. Okay, so if you don't really care too much about combat readiness and you just want a little bit more survivability, um, instead of a combat readiness booster, just add a healer like uh, Machates and Angelica. Destina or DN. And lastly, for PvE, she pretty much fits in any team due to her elemental advantage. But I would use her mainly as a farmer. If she has uh, Radiant Forever, she could be a hard hitting unit in uh, a Wyvern team or a Golem team. But me personally, I will, I would most likely just use her as like a fodder farmer. I think that's what, I guess that's what you call it. So yeah, that is Moonlight Araminthia. We will have to do more testing on her, but she seems like an amazing character. I will 100% be summoning for her and really do wish that I get her. I also wish that anyone that is watching and that is planning on going for her the best of luck in your myth in your mystic summons this week if you have any questions uh please leave them in the comment section below and i will try to get back to you as soon as i can all right everyone until next time